Hi, this video is brought to you by WSMS Studio Architects together with The Low Collective and today we're going to give you some ideas on how to get to know your local area and how to start thinking like an urban designer. If you received our House Inside Out booklet, this picks up on the section called How to Become an Urban Investigator. As an urban designer, something I've been trained to do is really understand how a place is put together before I design anything new. This is important for several reasons, but most of all, it gives you an appreciation of the existing qualities of a place, as well as those you want to highlight or improve through design. The techniques and skills used by urban designers aren't just about discovering new places. They can be just as useful when rediscovering old familiar places. Every place is unique, but when looking to discover more about an area, there are some common methods that can get you started. Whether you live in a busy central area or somewhere more rural, it can be really rewarding to delve deeper into somewhere you might feel like you know very well in order to uncover some of the hidden layers of a place. It can even make you feel as though you're visiting somewhere new. It is actually quite easy to find clues about what your area used to be. Maps are available from as early as the 17th century and are often free to download or look at. And we'll leave some links along with this video so that you can have a look yourself. By looking at several maps, you can literally track the main changes in your area. Another useful and freely available source of information for urban designers is census data. Census data is another way that you can see how an area has changed throughout the years as it contains information on all of the households that have lived in an area from around the year 1800. The data includes information on things like household size, age, occupation and even income. It is recorded every 10 years, so over time it is possible to track how a neighbourhood population has changed. It can also be used to predict how an area might change in the future. Rather than scroll through mountains of census data information to understand your local neighbourhood, a really good source of information about your local area is actually your local council website in the planning section. It might never have occurred to you to look at these documents, but they can tell you all about your area's past, present and future, as they contain masses of information used by planners and designers to make decisions about the future of a place, and this includes the census data that we've been talking about. If data isn't your thing, and map reading really isn't for you, there are plenty of other techniques that don't involve sitting in front of a computer that you can use to really get to know your area. There are clues better found in the streets themselves. To do this, there are a few things that are really important to have. Firstly, the time and the energy to walk your streets. This is probably the most important thing. Secondly, some curiosity and the ability to start observing what's around you. Thirdly, something to record the things you've noticed. Now this can be a sketchbook, a camera, a journal, anything you want really. If you received our booklet Home Inside Out, the section Become an Urban Investigator details some specific types of plan that you can use to start investigating your area. But if you don't have the booklet, don't worry, you can really get started very simply. A great way to think about this is to consider yourself on holiday in your local area. The reason for this is because when we're on holiday, we often behave in quite different ways to when we're not. For starters, we slow down. Being at a slow walking pace helps us to take in our surroundings and notice things we otherwise wouldn't. We pay attention to things like street names and landmarks because we need them to find our way around. In urban design, these are things that tell us how well a place is connected and about the historic uses of that place. For example, here we have a number of streets that are related to a historic palace that was once built by King Henry VIII. 
Though the original palace doesn't exist anymore, the names give clues to some of the royal connections with reference to some of the important families of the time. Many historic place names date back from medieval times and their meaning is related to Old English. As an example from Havering, Upminster literally means higher up monastery, suggesting that there was once a place of worship on high ground here. We have left a link with this video which allows you to search the name of your town or neighbourhood to find out its historic meaning. Another thing we do differently when we're on holiday is to take more photos. Photography or sketching can help us to see things more clearly and in more detail. By looking closely at buildings, we can tell a lot about how, why and when they were built. The style of a building is usually the first clue as to when it was built. Throughout history, we have had various trends and fashions in clothes and buildings are exactly the same. However, things can be a bit misleading, as here we have features that are typical of a Tudor timber framed building of the 16th century, but it is actually a building from much later when the mock Tudor style became popular in Edwardian times. Something else we tend to do more of whilst on holiday is to people watch. Now, I don't mean this in a creepy way, but we all know how nice it can be to sit on a park bench or a street side coffee table and watch the world go by. In urban design, this type of observation has been the subject of many influential studies that make successful places. After all, the way people behave in a place can tell you a lot about how they interact with their environment and each other. A lot of things we notice might seem like common sense. For example, isn't it obvious that on a cool day people like to walk on the sunny side of the road? Or that busy streets are streets with something going on? But all these help to build up a picture of a place and occasionally you might discover something entirely unexpected. And finally, something we do more of on holiday is actually just talk to people to find out things about the local environment. This hasn't always been possible in the last few months, but just casually speaking with a friend or neighbour about our area might yield some unexpected and wonderful stories worth sharing. Even asking a stranger for recommendations online can be a great way of discovering somewhere new in a place you already know. Whether that's a different place to eat or shop, or a place to get outside and relax. Often there are places and hidden gems we might have lived close to for years, but never knew it. Talking to people is one of the best ways to find out. So, we hope you've enjoyed this video and it's given you some good ideas on how to start investigating your area. However you decide to do it, we hope you will take some time to explore your local area in a bit more depth and just see where it takes you.